Hey guys, uh, we're going to show you how to knock out some of the charts you're going to need for Mark Raymond's classes at uh, Sobe EMBA. Uh, doing this on a Windows 2015 machine uh, using Office 365 version of Word. Uh, so hopefully it's fairly new for this year, 2016, and uh, it might just uh, last for a little while as actually a usable demo. All right, so right off the bat, let's draw this. So first thing I want to do is I want to go to Insert. I want to go Shapes. I want to grab this Z-shaped guy to make my XY axis. So it's going to come out as a Z. That's okay. I'm going to grab this middle toggle, drag it over to the right. Now I've got myself a nice L-shaped uh, axis. I'm going to drag it down out of the way really quick. And uh, I want this to be a thick black line. Good enough. All right, I need to put some labels on it. This label is going to be P. This label is going to be Q. So I can do this. I can just type P in here, and uh, then I could go enter, 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 enter. Oh no, there my lines are moving. So a better way to do that is to go back to your insert, and in this case, go text box, and uh, just go down here to draw a text box. These pre-built ones are just too fancy for what we're trying to do. So we're going to draw a little box right here. Uh, we are going to put the word, letter. P in there. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to do is I want to make this background in this text box. Instead of being white, I want it to be see-through. So I'm just going to go uh, shape fill, drop that down. I'm going to go no fill. Uh, I can also see there's a black outline around that, so I can go shape outline and go no outline. Perfect. All right. Now that I've got it kind of totally see-through, I can actually make this box a little bigger because it's easier to work with. Because what I'm looking for is that little four-way arrow to move things around. So I'm going to drag my P till it's where I want it. Now I'm going to do the same one for Q, so to do that I'm going to click on my P, get my four arrow, I'm going to right click, go copy, I'm going to click off of it, and I'm going to go paste. So there we go, so we'll call this one down here Q. Alright, the next thing we need to do is put our two curves. Since this is an average and marginal cost uh, curve, the average cost is going to be a nice smile where there's a definitive low point, it's in the very center of the curve, and the marginal cost curve is going to look more like uh, maybe the Nike or Nike logo uh, or a fish hook where it's going to have a real uh, strong curve and then it's going to uh, mellow out into uh, pretty much a straight line as it gets past that average cost. So let's draw those real quick. So the tool we need to do the nice uh, smooth curve is going to be up here in shapes and down here in basic shapes I'm looking for this one. It's called arc. So I will draw a box that fills up my whole chart and drop it and I see I've got an arc up here in the top right corner. Well that's not where I want it. Remember I want that nice smile shape right here. So I can grab this toggle, drag it over until I get one half of the smile. Grab this top toggle, drag it over until I get the bottom half of the smile. Get them about equal and hey, look at that, now I'm good. So now I can get that four-way arrow, drag this up to the middle of my chart. I'm halfway there. I'm going to make the color red. I'm going to make it red and thick, I think. Perfect. All right, let's do the marginal cost curve. For this one, we're going to go back to insert, but we're going to use a different tool this time. We're going to go to shapes, and now we're going to go up to lines, and I want this one that's called curve. So I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to click once, and then let go, and then I'm going to click twice up here, and let go. See how it's giving me this like toggle? That's fine. Now I just want to go enter and it creates my shape. So remember I want a curved line. So now that I've got that started and remember I had to do this using that curve tool. This guy right here. Uh, now I can right click and I can go edit points. So when I do that I'm gonna get these two points to work with and see as I move that see I got this white box here that's a toggle, and that's going to inform the shape of this curve. So as I drag that down, I can start to affect that hook shape, or my Nike logo, Nike logo, whatever you call it. So, oh, if I grab in a different point, I can really screw it up by adding a new point. So now I'm going to go Control Z to get rid of that, and it's gone. All right, see how it kind of comes up and then curls off? Well, I don't want it to curl off. I just want it to have that nice swoosh and then come up to a straight line. So to make that straight again, I'm going to grab that toggle box and bring it right in line with the dash line of the curve. Now I've got a nice perfectly shaped curve. Uh, so big thing I want to do now is get out of this little edit points mode. See how I've still got that little arrow? I'm going to hit enter and it's going to jump me back to my normal editing mode. So now I've got my big four-way arrow and I can drag this up and I know that I want this curve to cross my average cost curve at the very lowest point. So since I drew this as an arc, I can actually hold down shift, click it, and I can see my lowest points right there. So I know that this curve is actually off to the right 
uh, error. So to move that over, I can click it with my four-way arrow, and I can either move it to the right by using my four-way arrow, or I can come back and actually tighten up the curve a little bit by just dragging this side, and I can make it really skinny or really big. But I'm just going to kind of eyeball it till I find that center line. Now I'm going to hold down shift, click it again. I'm pretty close, so I'll grab this one. Oh, what happens? I'm moving them both. I don't want that to happen. So I'm actually going to hold down shift again and unclick my line that I don't want to move. And now simply move that one again, click it, eyeball it, laugh, and hit enter, and I'm out of here. All right. Now the thing we want to do is add a couple dashed lines. Dashed lines are easy. We're going to go back to insert. We're going to go back to shapes. This time we're just going to grab a straight line. And we're going to go to that center point. That's usually where you want to start drawing your dashed lines from. And I'm going to click in the center point. I'm going to hold my mouse down. And I'm going to start dragging. Well, see how that gives me a line that will go wherever I drag it? And I can kind of eyeball it and try and make it straight. But uh, I prefer not to leave things to chance. So the way I can force it to be straight is I'm going to hold down my shift key on my keyboard. And see, it's going to jump to 0 degrees. It'll jump to 0 degrees. It'll jump to 45 degrees. It'll jump to 90 degrees. And so on the whole way around the clock. So I can drag that over, and I get a nice perfectly straight line. And uh, in this case, I can go and go, you know what, I want it to be a dash line. So there's shape outline, dashes. Uh, I like these dashes. And shape outline, I want it to be thicker. So I can go down here and go width. And I'm going to make it a three-point line. And uh, you know what, I think I want that to be black. So I'll just grab that black color. Well, isn't that quite a line? All right, so now I've got one going over to this axis. I want another one going down. So the easiest way, now that I've got a line already done the way I want it, is to get that four-way arrow. Click it till I get my little white circle toggles. Get my four-way arrow again. Right click. Go copy. Click off of it. Go paste. Do do do. And now I got a second line. So to put it where I want it, I can just grab these toggles. Put one right there at the intersection point. Grab this toggle. Remember, hold down shift so it jumps to 90 degrees. Drag it to my line. Hey, Bob's your uncle. All right, last thing we need are some labels for these two points on the axis. Easy way to do that is I already know I made a text box here. I'm going to go click that P, right click it, copy it, click off of it, go paste. And so there's P. I can put that here. That's fine. Now I'll grab my Q and click it. Right click it, go copy, click off of it, go paste. And there's my Q and I can put it down here. Uh, one of the things you're going to find with Mark is he'll do some weird things like hats and bars. So how do I add those? All right, well, I can click on that P, and I'm going to want to make this one P bar, let's call it. Uh, so in this case, uh, I'm actually going to make it like a lowercase P. So I just typed my P. I'm not going to select it. I'm just going to leave my cursor right beside it. I'm going to go to Insert. I'm going to go to Symbol, and I'm going to go to More Symbols. And I'm going to jump, if I'm not already, if I'm way at the top of this list and you're up looking at all these crazy things, you can jump to the ones you're looking for by going down here and typing 0300 and look at that, now I'm down into my stuff. So I said we wanted to make this P bar, there's my bar right there, I'm going to select it, I'm going to hit insert, and look at that, now i got a P bar on here. Well let's do the same thing for Q now, so close this, click on my Q, click beside it, I want to make this lowercase Q, and now I'll go back, symbol, more symbols, and this one we're going to do a hat. And there's hat, insert, done. Okay, last thing. Uh, some things you might want to do sometimes is actually call out a specific portion of a curve. In this case, I'm going to call this the supply function, the part of the marginal that's above the average. And so how do I show that as something separate? Probably one of the best ways to accomplish this is to go up, uh, go back to your shapes, of course. And uh, what we want to select this time is down here in our basic shapes. Uh, we can select either a right brace or a left brace. What that's going to mean is what side of this line do I want to refer to? Well, I'm going to grab a left brace because I want to talk about, I don't know, I want to put my label on the left side. So let's go grab that. So there's a left brace, and I kind of drag that where I want it. And that's close, but that's not exactly what I'm trying to get at. So see this little uh, spinning circle here? That's my uh, tilt function, so I can kind of grab that until I get my brace so that it matches my curve. Now I can use the toggles on the corners so that I can put it right at the start, right at the end. Lovely. All right. Uh, I can use one of the prefab lines here. I'm going to make this a dashed uh, green line, let's call it. And uh, maybe I want to put my title so it's up a little higher so I can actually move where the little uh, call-out arrow goes on this line. So I'll move it up to the top somewhere. And uh, now all I need is to put a text box with the name on it. So 
grab this text box, copy it, click off of it, paste it, move it over to where we want it, and type that this portion is the supply function. Whoop. Supply function. All right, done. And I can kind of fuss with that, move it to where I'd like it uh, by clicking off of it, clicking on it, and then moving, and off we go. Okay, uh, the last thing is now that I've got this all drawn, maybe I realize that, you know what, this isn't really where I want it in my document, and uh, I can try to kind of grab everything and try and cut it, but oh, that didn't work very well. And, okay, let's try this, and maybe I'll just do Control X this time. All right, so it disappeared. And, I don't know if we're down here and go control V, but that's eh, still not all that great a way of doing it. So probably one of the best ways is once you get your function all drawn, uh, go into your start menu, uh, down here search, type in the word snipping. Now what that's going to give you is the best little screen capture tool uh, that Windows has come out with in a while. So you can click on snipping tool. Uh, it is going to go, I want to get a new snip. And see how my whole screen went kind of gray? Now I've got this little cursor. I can draw a box around my entire graph, grab it, and hey, look at that. It showed up inside a snipping tool. Now I can save it right to my desktop as an image, uh, and we will call it. So it's a PNG file. I prefer to have these in JPEGs. And I'm going to call this Avg Merge Cost Chart. And there we go. Now I can also hit copy here, put it on my clipboard as an image now, and uh, I can now paste it in the document anywhere I want. See, this is the problem. Before it's an image, it gets all broken apart when you try and work with it. Uh, if I want to get so that I'm totally out of that document, maybe I'm in a new one over here. Hey, look at that. There's the assignment I'm working on right now, and I want to put that new chart in there, put my cursor where I want it, control V to paste, and hey, there it is. There's my chart. Hope you found this helpful, guys. Uh, we're going to do one more in another video if you want to see some more examples. Bye-bye.